All right, so we're back in the workshop. I'm collaborating with my son, Andrew. What's this project all about? Right, so since you're really good at copying other people and you know I'm going to school to make real art and not copy, I figure I'll teach you how to make your own work today. All right, that's coming up. Alright, so go ahead and explain this project. I understand that you're the, it's a free art class or something like that, so explain what we're doing here. So we're making a lamp today, um, and we're going to show you two different ways to do it. One involves 3D printing, and the other involves buying some stuff at Lowe's. But the way we're going to make it free is giving you guys instructions on how to do it yourself. Alright, so we're all about making things simple with my simple builds. And again, like he said, you know, we did 3D print this, and I understand that not everybody has a 3D printer. We're going to show you how to do this part project also with simple parts from a local big box store. Okay. All right, so let's get started on this. And uh, so I see we got a few things playing out here. We got a Gorilla tripod, which is kind of interesting. Um, you know, 3D printed part that we've already uh, spit out here. Some cables, the nut. Uh, what what exactly we're doing? I see you got some artwork here. What is this? Yeah. So we're looking at the artwork here now. We've kind of had this gorilla pod mixed with a older uh, style of light. All right, so we're going to do a vintage style light for this. Uh, the main idea for that is so that we, it gives this kind of juxtaposition of new and modern with the gorilla pod, but that vintage look with the older light. Okay. So it'll actually be pretty simple with our uh, base here on this one. So we're just going to drop in a nut, screw right to the pod, and Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. All right. So we'll go ahead and get this started and uh, see how this turns out. So for starters, basically we're gonna do um, just cheap plug here. We're gonna cut off the end of it. Once it gets that finished stripping up, we're gonna run it through this little hole we built into the uh, model. That'll run up and through. Plug it in, drop the nut. So uh, one of the things that we can do, um, so we're going to use CA glue to glue this into the bottom of this. So I'm going to cover up the hole just so it doesn't leak all over my table. And then try to set this glue in. Hopefully I can get the top off. While he tries to open that, we're going <laughs> to cut to a... It's, it's glued, glued it's all there. flat. While he tries to work on that, I'm going to cut to a quick time lapse of the 3D print for this. And I'll do a little bit explaining a bit more about this project. So even though a large part of this project is making it free, the other big part of this project is that it's a meme. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, how is a lamp a meme? Well, I'm taking the approach of what a meme classically means, not what we know it now. As we know it now, it's those things on the internet that people like and share on Facebook. But a meme started as something of imitation of something that already exists or a recreation of it. A good example of this is chairs. Over the years, chairs have had so many different variations of where they, from where they started to where they are now. All right, so this, this project that we're building, it kind of reminds me of uh, Toy Story with Sid and his Barbie doll, or his uh, doll head creation on the, uh, the, the little walking leg. Yeah. So that's what it kind of reminds me of. So I got this uh, glued in. Hopefully this is cured up. Um, it was just a quick set CA glue. Use the accelerator. A um, couple seconds and we're done. I think what we're going to have is uh, a little bit of residue on the bottom side of that, but that's okay. Um, I think uh, when we put this together, we can, we're can we not really taking this apart again. No. So I'm going to go ahead and, and clip this out of here and attempt to screw it on. And hopefully that glue will will work its way around. Them. All right, so when you look at electrical out, uh, outlets, um, you always gonna have a hot wire and a neutral wire. On these types of plugs, uh, basically your fat plug right here, that's gonna be your neutral, and the other one will be your hot. You can tell which one is which as you trace the wire, because even on the wire itself, either it's, sometimes there's a white stripe down the side, or there's a texture 
Um, this one is ribbed. It's kind of hard to see, but you can certainly feel it to know that that is your neutral wire. So as I trace that back inside of here, we're going to find that same ribbing in here. And that's going to be the neutral. Neutral grows, goes with the silver. Now to hold in the socket, we're using Gorilla Glue and water to activate the Gorilla Glue. In addition to that, at the base where the power cables come through, we're using a little bit of hot glue to help fill in that space to keep it so there's no exposed wiring. All right, so as you can see, we got the first project done and I want to go ahead and uh, get everything prepped for the next project and uh, we'll get that put together. All right, so we're back for part two and this time we're gonna do a build completely out of parts um, that we find around the shop here and from a big box store. And uh, so with this one, we're basically going to use these two pieces of coupling PVC material that come from the electrical aisle. Um, you could have used regular PVC for this as well, because um, there's nothing that uh, this is being used for as far as like outdoor or anything like that. Uh, so there's two steps that we're going to need to do. We need to cut off some of these extra threads so this fits down flush in there. We wanted to basically give it a little bit of texture, just give it a little bit more of that industrial vibe. And then also we're gonna to have to plug the bottom of this with plywood. To do that, we're gonna use a circular hole uh, cutter and uh, it's, it's just a hair over the outside of this, but by the time we cut it, it should fit pretty nicely into the wood, hopefully. Now the fun part about these, <laughs> I gotta get that piece out of the inside of there and right now it's still a little bit hot so we're gonna let it sit for just a second and go ahead and move over to this piece. A lot of different ways you can do this. We can stick a PVC pipe in it and run it through the miter saw uh, so that you have the length that you need to safely cut it. I'm actually gonna use a multi-tool. This is something that is great to have around the shop um, because you can pretty much use it for anything. All right, so we've drilled a hole inside of this, just a little bit smaller than the nut. I'm gonna use this clamp, and use a vise, um, whatever you've got. Um, my vise is not currently attached to the table. A hefty brick. No, uh, he's gonna make more than that. <laughs> So just to get it started, I am going to use a hammer. You could use the hammer the entire time, but he likes to play with his tools. Yeah. I'm doing this so that I don't have to hit my fingers. <laughs> Fair enough. Just enough of an indention in there to, to keep it from falling out on me. Now that we got that nut in place, we have to figure out a way to get our power through to this socket. Now, unlike the 3D printed version, this PVC pipe piece doesn't already have a hole for power to run through. To fix that, we drilled a hole through the side and stuck a cable through. Another difference from the first one is on this socket, we're going to wrap it up with some electrical tape to help fit it into the PVC piece because it's larger than the 3D printed part that was fitted to the socket. Alright, so when I wrapped this originally, I wrapped it a couple of times extra. So now we're just going to peel back one, one time or one uh, rotation at a time just to see like where that snug point is. I'll wait down the hot glue to melt. I uh, just want to go ahead and say that basically all the plans that we have for this. Drew's going to write, write up a nice article and instructions on exactly how we built these, including links to all the parts that you can purchase your own and the file so that you can 3D print your own uh, piece for the light socket. Um, they're all, they can all be found at uh, the My Simple Builds website at mysimplebuilds.com. So for this project, we did use a piece of scrap plywood, but you can always use foam core. 
uh, like art, art type foam, um, pretty much anything that's semi rigid to put in the bottom of this as long as you can secure it and not have the wires exposed because that's the whole purpose of what of covering this up. Alright so our project is all finished. We have two lights here that we've built. One with parts that we've got from a big box store and one that we 3D printed. Both of these are just using Gorilla Pod legs. You can use just about anything. Uh, it's just basically a, on the bottom side of that it's just a quarter 20 screw. Um, just a few cents from a, from a hardware store. Hope you've learned a lot from this video. We enjoyed doing both of these projects and uh, definitely learned a lot. And most importantly, be creative and have fun as a maker. Because remember, learning is doing. And if you try this project out yourself, make sure to tag us on either Instagram or Facebook at My Simple Builds so we can see your take on it. Until next time, this has been My Simple Builds. I'm Brad. And I'm Andrew. Take care. And have fun as a maker. Because remember, learning is doing. And if you try this product, you're... Ugh, the dead, the dead, the dead. <laughs> this is proof that fat bellies do come in handy.